It's Saturday here at the SUAS competition, and once again the weather has been kind to us and all the teams were able to fly their competition runs. Let's take a look at how they did. The Rutgers University team's plane made two sorties, performing autonomous waypoint navigation and search before running out of battery on its second run. Fortunately, its hard landing just took off the undercarriage. It will be rebuilt. UC San Diego took off and switched successfully into autonomous mode, navigating through the waypoints and capturing data in the search zone. Disaster struck while running its autonomous search pattern. This massive crash totaled the plane. Hopefully some of the electronics survived. The Université de Sherbrooke team drove down from Montreal to make it all look too easy. Their plane flew autonomously the whole way from takeoff to landing, flying the waypoint run and locating five targets, one of them within 35 feet. Cornell's plane took off manually and switched into autonomous mode for the waypoint run. It captured all the waypoints, then entered the search zone, where it successfully located one target and returned for a safe manual landing. The University of Arizona team fielded the only twin-engine plane in the competition. Its flying proved as good as its looks, with smooth autonomous takeoff and landing. All waypoints were captured and a search pattern flown before returning to base. Northwestern Michigan put in a great effort for their first time in the competition, autonomously navigating the waypoints and spotting some targets without quite managing to locate them within 250 feet for the points. They did receive a penalty for breaking an altitude limit though, a good learning experience for next year. Virginia Commonwealth University had a scary seat of the pants takeoff, but managed to recover and go into autonomous navigation and search. They captured all but one of the waypoints and had time to make an attempt to retrieve the file from the SRIC network access point. Delhi Technological University shipped their plane around the world from India and reassembled it here. It took off autonomously and performed navigation, search with automatic target recognition, and an SRIC attempt before surviving a hairy one-wheel landing. Embry-Riddle UARE took things to the next level with an autonomous takeoff from a catapult launcher. The flying wing craft flew the whole mission profile, performing waypoint navigation, search, and an attempt at connecting to the SRIC before landing, all autonomously. Kansas State Salina stood out with the only robot helicopter in this year's competition. After some initial problems, it managed to autonomously take off, navigate the waypoints, fly a search pattern and land. One target was successfully located. Hampton Roads High School team Synergy flew a payload capability test, successfully taking off and landing with their camera on board. A great effort for a high school team, especially since they have a completely new group of students this year. Cal State University Northridge flew one of the slickest looking custom planes this year. It autonomously took off, navigated the waypoints, and flew a search pattern that successfully found the characteristics and location of one target. North Carolina State had a lot to live up to as the only veteran team that's been in all 10 years of this competition. They overcame some problems with their laser altimeter to do just that, locating targets in the search zone and successfully retrieving the file from the SRIC. Competing for the first time, Embry-Riddle Arizona's Team Awesome lived up to their name, overcoming tough wind conditions for their hand-launched powered glider to autonomously locate five targets, three of them within 50 feet. Kansas State were also here for the first time, but being new didn't stop them from having what some judges called the best imaging station in the competition. Unfortunately, they also had a harsh awakening to technical glitches, as a last-minute GPS failure forced them to just do a quick remote control flight. UT Austin may have been the victim of 433 MHz radio interference as their plane lost remote control and crashed on takeoff. Fortunately, they got far enough off the ground to transition flight modes, counting as a successful takeoff. Simon Fraser University was another first time team this year. Their plane made four takeoffs, but had trouble getting their autopilot to recognize the throttle. With two minutes of mission time to go, the plane finally crashed, attempting an autonomous return to base. Cal Polytechnic Pomona's motto seems to be, go big or go home. Their 37 pound, 12 foot Telemaster was the largest airframe this year and their first flight attempt in the competition. Their plan was to transition to autonomous mode and practice turns and that's exactly what they did. Great Mills High School brought an amazing platform for a high school team, but unfortunately lost most of their mission time due to a radio modem failure. With only minutes remaining, they attempted an RC takeoff but lost their nose gear in the vicious crosswind. Utah State had the only quad rotor in this year's competition and had real difficulties in the high wind conditions in the afternoon. While calibrating for the trip from Utah down to sea level altitude, they crashed twice, a second time for good. Mississippi State brought a gorgeous custom airframe with a gasoline pusher engine. It performed autonomous navigation and search from a manual takeoff, successfully locating three of the targets. 
RV College of Engineering in India travelled around the world to be here as a first-time team this year. Their plane performed autonomous takeoff, navigation and search, a fantastic freshman effort. Embry-Riddle Blackbird impressed the spectators with an autonomous takeoff from a two-person hand launch. After an earlier timeout, they had just enough time left to autonomously fly some of the waypoints and run a short search pattern. MS Ramaya Institute of Technology suffered a devastating crash on takeoff, losing pieces of their electronics in the grass. But this team never gives in. They raced out to replace their custom plane with an off-the-shelf model, and other teams pitched in with parts to help them rebuild. After an exhausting all-night struggle, they couldn't quite fix the autopilot, but their persistence did pay off in the form of a remote control run with GPS. Finally, Bucknell University also refused to give up, coming late to the competition and using their flight line time to put their powered glider together. They got it assembled just in time to get in a hand launch, take off and land. That's how the runs went, but due to the secret information in the competition, only the judges really know how the teams actually performed. The cash prizes are still up for grabs. We're going to have to go to the banquet to find out who the big winners are.